everybody. Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. My name is Jason here in Columbus, Ohio. So glad you could join me for my first review. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a drumming enthusiast and also a bourbon enthusiast. I love whiskeys of all kinds, mostly bourbon. Uh, I'm trying to get more into scotch and uh, I do love some Irish whiskeys as well. Um, so I will be reviewing those as the time goes on, but mostly you want to stick to my true love, which is bourbon. Uh, for my first review today, what I want to do is review Jefferson's Aged at Sea, the special weeded mash bill version. Um, before we get started, let's take a look at the bottle. So welcome back. As you saw from the pictures of the bottle, this is the special Jefferson's Ocean weeded mash bill. For those of you who don't know what that means, uh, weeded mash bill uh, means that typically uh, bourbon uh, has a mash bill of 51% corn and then the rest is rounded out with rye and barley. Uh, a weeded mash bill basically replaces the rye with wheat and gives you a little bit more of, a, of an easy flavor profile. Some of the more famous uh, weeders are Maker's Mark, uh, this guy, Weller, 107, uh, all the Wellers actually, and probably the most infamous bourbon is the uh, Pappy Van Winkle collection, um, which I still have yet to get my hands on. So a little bit more about this is, this is bottled at 45% alcohol, it's at 90 proof. Um, apparently for the voyage, it went to um, 30 different ports, across the equator four different times, and uh, also hit five different continents. So some people think it's kind of a marketing scheme uh, that went around the ocean all this, all these different times, uh, um, and especially kind of the part about imparting flavor into it. But I must say with the regular bourbon, uh, the standard Nashville, I do notice some salt uh, in that kind of balancing with the caramel. So I'm really excited to see how a weeded mash bill kind of plays with those flavors from the ocean as well. So let's get into it. I'm usually a pretty generous pourer. So. <clears throat> So right away on the nose, um, what I'm getting is really, really strong vanilla flavor, uh, a little bit of caramel, and definitely, definitely a little bit of that barrel char. I don't know if you can see here, but uh, there is a really nice kind of honey golden color to it. It's definitely more viscous than I thought. Um, I really couldn't get an age on this. Uh, if anyone knows, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, but. It's got a really good body to it. Um, as I go back, I'm getting a little bit, a little bit of apple on there, but definitely that vanilla is really kind of punching through. All right, let's give it a try. Hmm. Hmm. So right off the bat. It's, it tastes just like the, it kind of tastes just like the nose. I mean, it's very vanilla forward. As it works its way back, you get some of those caramel notes. Um, you get a little bit of a burn, but not too bad. I mean, it's only 90 proof. Uh, very easy to drink. Um, the first sip is always kind of the one where it kind of sets up your, uh, your palate. Let's go back for the second sip, see what we get. Okay, and there it is. So I was really kind of hoping to find the salt note in there, and I did get it on the second sip. I feel like I get it stronger in the uh, regular Jefferson's uh, bourbon. Um, I think it might play better on the regular bourbon, given that I feel like you get more of a caramel in the regular bourbon um, than this. This this is more vanilla forward, but definitely a little bit sweeter but I kind of like that salted caramel flavor I get in the regular bourbon. But the vanilla and the salt in this do work well together, so I can't really, I can't really say anything bad about that. It's, it's, it's very good. Mm. Really good, I mean, 
it's not a huge depth of flavor that you're getting from this. It's a pretty short finish. Uh, but as far as the weeded bourbon, I think it's it's definitely unique. Um, I still would probably lean towards having some Weller uh, or even the Maker's Mark Cast Strength, which I think is a great bourbon. Um, but this one, this one is surprisingly pretty good. Uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect of this, um, being that my previous experience with the Jeffersons were, were really good. Uh, so, but I can't say can't say too many bad things about this. It's so just a really solid weeded bourbon. So now, is this uh, bourbon worth it? So I paid about 60 to 65 bucks, I think, in Indiana when I picked this up. Um, there are some other weeded bourbons that I really enjoy. Uh, Larceny, Maker's Mark, Cast Strength, um, even this guy, the Weller, uh, which you can find at the at a fair price is uh, about $40 cheaper than this. Um, so is it worth it? I'm not sure. Uh, I probably, for the money, there's probably things you could find better. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit more unique and you really like that salt flavor uh, in the bourbon, um, I think this might be something you really like if you could find it. So thanks for joining me here on the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room channel. Uh, like I said, it's my first review. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and let me know if you have anything you want to you want me to review. Um, my next review will be the Elijah Craig Power Proof B518, which I'm really looking forward to trying. And like I always say, it's not about the whiskey, but it's the people you share it with. Cheers, everyone.